let's get right into that next one. You know, I'm pumped for the Francisco Trinaldo and Muslim Salikov fight, and I'll explain why. Trinaldo's a guy I'm going to be jealous of for the rest of my life, right? When you're 33 years old and trench away and just enjoy the striking and the, and you know, bunching bag, all that kind of stuff is a hobby and hopefully becomes a gym thing when everything opens up. But man, let's talk about just how great this man looks at 40 years old. Who doesn't want to look like that at 40? I mean, obviously, he's not going to be cutting down to lightweight anytime soon. And this is much better weight class for him. I think he's on those last legs, though, despite looking so great. And you look when you look at the Jay Herbert fight, right? That was a fight where he was actually losing on the feet quite a bit. He actually got stung really badly in that round, but ended up pulling off a much very surprised big power shot type win. It was a beautiful finish, an absolutely amazing win for a guy who's now pushing into his 40s. But... You know, now he's getting a real, real dog. The king of Kung Fu in Muslim Salkov. What I love about him is those leg kicks, right? You look at his previous fights. I mean, you know, the Zaleski fight. I actually thought the Zaleski won that fight personally, but it was so close that you have to be able to see both sides. Absolute beast striker, right? He can take damage. I think he's been able to, you know, fend off any type of ground scare from anybody that he's fought so far. And that's where Francisco Trinaldo might be able to take this fight if he's getting these big punches in. You talk about the losses that we've seen from uh, Francisco Trinaldo. Those are the most, you know, the best part about his game when you take a look at it. You know, Kevin Lee's the James Vick was the one loss where you're like, oh my, yeah, that really did happen because it was actually James Vick's last win before he went on that infamous 0 and 5 run. But you know, you have the Gleason T Bows, the Peter Hallmans, the Michael Chiesas of the world. That's who Trinado's been losing to in his career. The Alexander Hernandez fight, another guy that we're seeing flip flop when it comes to fighting the best versus, you know, UFC caliber fighters going into the Salikov fight, I think that's something that we're going to be keeping an eye on, right? I think Salikov is proving that he definitely belongs in that top 15 very soon, and you know, if not already, and Star Poli, right? Like that's, a, that's a fight where I watched it specifically because you know, we get to analyze both these guys and the kicks, right? This was a very good demonstration of how both guys' kicking games really work against each other, and I think that Salikov won that fight pretty handedly it makes it an interesting belt when it comes to the uh, Trinaldo fight, right? Because I think Trinaldo enjoys trying to get these big power shots in. I don't think he's going to be as technically sound as Salikov is, which is probably what makes this fight a little one-sided. I mean, I think that our, when we talk about Trinaldo, his ability to pull off the victories are there. And, you know, we just touched on some of those UFC losses. They're against some of the best fighters we've seen. You know, it's funny, you know, just five years ago, we saw him beat guys like Ross Pearson, Yancey Medeiros, and Paul Felder in the same year. So, that's how good Francis Trinaldo is as a fighter. So that's why I don't want to write him off so much in this fight. It's just from a styles perspective, I think this is a really tough battle for him because from a striking game, Salikov can not only dish it, but he can take it. And I just, I'm really curious to see if, 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 you know, Francisco has the ability to get this fight to the ground if he needs to, because both guys enjoy the striking games pretty much, but I think this is a great example of a fight where we're going to see a whole mix of things happen based on how these guys are feeling. You know, if Trinaldo's feeling like he's taking a massive, massive beating, similar to the Herbert fight, he's going to have to fight his way out of that one and try to muster up some offense of his own, which we've clearly seen him do. So I'm excited to check these lines, to be quite honest, because I, I don't even know where this one's going to fall. Uh, I'm going to just quickly toss the coin. I'm going to say Salikov is going to be a minus 150. It's hard for me not to see that. So Muslim Salikov, minus 250 favorite on, on Bet365. Looks like he opened at a minus 180. So, you know, that was a bit closer to my 150 uh, opening line. But, you know, outside of that, I think it's a pretty fun fight. You know, the last couple of points on this one, the big thing about Salikov is, you know, he can just take such a beating, right? And with Trinaldo moving up in weight for this one, you can't dad strength anybody anymore. With the Jay Herbert fight at 155, not making weight, that dad strength aspect of it seems to be gone now. You're going to be taking on a much bigger guy, a dude who's definitely good on his feet. So that's where I see the edge very much changing in favor of the bigger fighters at 170 because Trinaldo is going to have to change his game plan a little bit with how he's been able to dominate some of the guys at 55. So get excited for that one. There's a whole bunch of chess games going on in that fight that I think the line is obviously leaning one way, but don't get it twisted. We've obviously seen crazier things. And like I said, that chess aspect of this fight is just so phenomenal. So keep an eye on that one. I do, you know, have some curiosity towards that not going the distance line for those two, because I think that there is some finishing ability on both sides, whether it's luck or technique on one side versus the other, who knows? I think we're going to be able to see that in that, in that upcoming fight.